Undercover Carson, secret agent. Operation Death Ray, an assignment in Rio. Giles Davenport, my Rio contact, warned me from the start that I'd be amazed at the resourcefulness of his servant, Angelo. This swarthy fellow would vanish for a few hours, a few days perhaps, spending the time amongst his mysterious and many relatives and associates, and coming to light with something that would give us a fresh lead to follow in our search for the deadly secret weapon. Now he discovered that Chaco, the name of one of the scientists, had been connected with a search for the lights that never go out. But before we had time to follow this lead any further, there was a phone call to Sir Giles' Copacabana apartment. Faye Corelli, agitated, telling him to tell me that the bow and arrows of her archery kit were missing from El Rocco, where till recently she had danced. Suddenly she screamed, and there was silence. It's obvious, Carson. She knew she only had a matter of seconds to pass this information on to us, and equally obvious that someone was determined to stop her. Well, Sir Giles, we know from this that the arrow that killed Anton Zorowski was taken from El Rocco without Faye's knowledge. It would appear so, old man. Uh, if I may speak, Excellency. Uh, naturally, Angelo, all views welcome. Uh, what is it? This, Excellency. First, the Senorita may be attempting to make it appear that the bow and the arrows were taken and used without her knowledge. <laughs> you do suspect these women. Uh, from the events of the past, them are not justified, Excellency. Oh, certainly, certainly. Though bear this in mind, the young woman was quite frantic about it oh, all. Oh, indeed. And I have often spent an hour or two in the back seat of some picture house. Upon the screen, I've watched numerous women who were most convincingly frantic. Uh, see your point. It could have been an act, I suppose. No, that is my first point. But why an act? There I arrive at the other point, Senor. It is possible that the Senorita desires to lure you into some trap. How, sir? By performing as if she is in need of some assistance. Look, old chap. All she'd have to do is ask me to meet her somewhere. And being the unsuspecting fellow you are, you'd uh, saunter along, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Always carry man's best friends. Eh? Oh, oh, uh, the pipes. Uh. So. It is possible, on the other hand, however, that she wishes you to take certain steps in going to her assistance, and in so doing, expose yourself to much greater danger. You must grant that, I suppose. I think you must. Yet I keep hearing that scream over the telephone. And I keep watching the second stick by and nothing being done. But what can be done? Well, call the place where she lives. You know that old man? Mm, sure. Took her home from the White Tulip last night. And this could well have taken place at the White Tulip. That's if it's anything like the place where she danced before. Mm, so, Sir Giles. I'll contact the White Tulip and El Rocco. And Angelo would better go with you. If Senor Carson desires it. Oh, naturally. But we mustn't forget other business. Other business? Chaka. The search for the lights that never go out. Oh, that good gracious no. But how intriguing it is, the search for the lights that never go out. Now, we'll follow that up as soon as we've cleared up this trouble of phase. And in clearing it up, Sir Giles, we might well discover something to help us in our search for the death ray secret. Exactly. Right then. Yeah, first make sure we've got all pipes likely to be needed. <laughs> Men going to battle with pipes, eh? <laughs> all set. You right, Angelo? I've got my knife, Senor. Well, with that and the pipes and the pair of us, we're quite an arsenal. Let's go. We took the Davenport rolls and set out through the busy, crowded streets, with Angelo at the wheel, defying the traffic police as usual. It was too early for the white tulip to have got to the swing of things. However, all points had to be checked. I asked the head waiter to see if Faye was on the premises anywhere. Angelo was at my side, keeping a watchful eye as the waiter came back. I fear she has not arrived, Senor. But the bands, here? Yeah? They play from the start of our dinner session. Oh. Mademoiselle Carelli only here for evening sessions. You see, Senor. What time she due? Uh, normally, Senor, not for an hour yet. Oh, then I won't worry. Uh, nothing further, Senor? Oh, uh, <laughs> thanks for your trouble. You're here. Ah, oh, many thanks, Senor. Many thanks. Many thanks. Come on, Shello, let's go. To where now? We might be courting trouble, but must take risk. And El what? Rocco. And what, Senor, if they are also the head waiter departs on the promise of looking for the Senorita, then returns with a smile, says that she's not to be found? And extends his hand for a tip. <laughs> you are trusting, sir. Uh, that is how I observe the conduct of the waiter, Senor. I realise that. Not much else we can do at this stage. Anyway, there's a big cockney doorman usually on duty outside El Rocco. He should know. <laughs> Ma 
Mademoiselle Carilli, dancer. I know her. She's not inside. You're positive about that? Well, I've been here since noon. Go in if you're not satisfied. Only no, 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 not doubting you. She left here, you know. So, the white tulip. However, was she here at all earlier in the day? What does she be doing here? Yeah, let it pass. Thanks. Uh, over here. Oh. Oh, much obliged, sir. Much obliged. I would not place great faith in the word of that one. Yeah, I'm with you, Angela. Odd sort of a bird to be acting as doorman in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it is because the authorities desire his presence in some other part of the world. It could well be. And now where to, Senor? Fay's apartment. Ah. Then permit me to open the door. I'm right. Just one curious thing. And that, Senor? Fay had to come to this place to pick up our (laughs) kit. I was about to bring up that certain point. And yet the doorman says that he hasn't seen her here. Indeed. Well, either he hasn't, or he has, but he's not saying. How's it with that? Let's aboard and to Faye's apartment. Uh, three times you have knocked, Seno. There's no reply from within. Sir, and no light from within. Then where shall we look and inquire now? Right here. Here, Seno? You keep your eyes skinned for someone coming upstairs. Of the offer a certain pipe. Hmm? Oh, the one which you are able to manipulate locks, huh? Sir. <laughs> yeah, but keep eyes skinned as Ah, uh, indeed, Senor. Proceed. Right. Hmm. Shouldn't be long before. Ah. You've got it? So. Now cover me as I open up and go in. All is well, Senor. Here goes. Door. Should be light switch somewhere. Uh, ah, thought so. Right. In with you, Angelo, and close door. See, si, Senor. Uh, not done to walk in like this, but under circumstances we must. Uh, I'll check the bedroom here. You take the bathroom and kitchen. Indeed, Senor. Hmm. Place this size hardly merits title of apartment. Hmm. Bed untouched. Nothing. Ah, Senor! Found something? Ah, uh-huh. Indeed. Ah, right with you. In the bathroom, there is nothing. But in this corner of the kitchen... Well? A bow, Senor, and a number of arrows. The archery kit. See. And according to Fay, they were missing from El Rocco. <laughs> missing from there, but here all the time. So it seems. What game is the Senorita playing? I have no idea, Angela. No idea. And it is quite clear she is not here. Quite. Then how shall we continue our search? Let's see... Getting on for three quarters of an hour since we called at the White Tulip. Well, by the time we get back there, she should be due. I'll drop in. If she's not there on time, then we'll have to think of something else. Finding that archery kit didn't make sense. Could it be that Fay had been involved in the killing of Anton Zorowski, a man who might finally have helped us in our quest? but was now trying to throw us off the scent? Well, I left Angelo outside and was informed by the head waiter that Fay had arrived at the White Tulip on time, quite her gay self. There could be nothing but greater suspicion from what she told me when she joined my table. Of course I am all right, Monsieur Bruce. I'm so much better after seeing you. But, uh, Sir Giles was telling me about the phone call. I'll just ring him to tell him that the bow and arrows of my archery kit are gone from El Rocco, that is all. To pass on to you. He uh, imagined you're a little panicky. Oh, I was in a hurry. In fact, he rather had impression that you screamed before hanging up. Oh, that. We were rather disturbed. It was the eggs. Eggs? We, oui, the eggs. You know them, but amazing what they're doing in this conversation. But I have them in my arms when I telephone. The bag of them. All of a sudden, when I begin to talk to Monsieur Sir Giles, they begin to sleep. And then they do sleep. Boom. And I scream. I see. <laughs> no, I didn't think it was anything as harmless as a broken egg or two, though. I upset you? I just thought for a moment something might have been wrong. Mama, everything is wonderful. Howsoever, how did you uh, manage to find out that your archery kit was missing from El Rocco, where you left it? I go there to look for it. This morning, eh? I sleep in this morning, this afternoon. Afternoon, eh? Oui. And they were gone? Someone steal them. You cannot trust anyone at El Rocco. And, uh... Now you're without archery kit. 
Oui, Monsieur Bruce. Now I cannot practice and surprise you with my skill. On the contrary, my dear, your skill is breathtaking. You mean the dancing? Everything. Monsieur Bruce, you're rising. Where are you going? I must get back to Sir Giles. Why must you? Oh, walked out on him, you know. Must give him a hand with the uh, washing up. By Jove, Carson, the cool nerve of the creature. Oh, so, Sir Giles, Mademoiselle Fakarelli is either incredibly scatterbrained... Or monstrously clever. Yes. Never blinked an eyelash. At the uh, wrong time, I mean. No. Oh, well, that promotes her to suspect number one now. Oh, I dare say. What? You dare say. I was only thinking. The whole thing's too glib. Perhaps she did scream. But she did tell you what it was. Eggs or something. Uh, rather too pat, though. It is possible that she's been bullied or threatened into passing the whole thing off. But the archery kit, in her apartment. She looked you in, you in the eye and told you she didn't have one. And possibly planted in her absence. No. No, Carson. Mademoiselle Fakarelli is working against us, and that's final. And now for this other business. This uh, charcoal and the search for the lights that never go out. You've something on that, sir? Yes, indeed I have. It rang a bell, as you might say. I've an old friend who's well up in history, folklore, myths and the like. There's quite a story behind the lights that never go out. He's coming over presently to tell us. Believe me, Carson, it'll make you wonder. <laughs> So, there it was. I felt a little sad at having to regard Faye in this new light, but the facts were against her. Meanwhile, the story of the lights that never go out was to start a fantastic new phase in Operation Death Ray.